Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrap Me Quick Designs and welcome to 12 Days of Cricut Christmas Crafts and today is day two and we're going to be making a hoop frame wreath with iron on and you can see the project right here that's what we're going to be working on it's super popular right now everybody's wanting to know how to do it so I thought this would be a great project for us now this is a step-by-step -step tutorial for for design space users with the Cricut so you can make this with either the Cricut Maker or the Cricut um, any of the Cricut Explore machines and you will get the design space cut file and the supply list for this project will be where you see the description of the video on my YouTube channel okay so that's where everything's gonna live and you can go out there and download that design space file and be able to make the same project if you want all right, but what I want to show you is how did I come up with the design and how do I size it and all of that stuff. And we're going to go over into Design Space and we're going to look for a image set underneath cartridges that's called Warm Wishes and Marshmallow Kisses. It's one of the new image sets that Cricut has added to Cricut Design Space, uh, Ac Cricut Access. It has so many adorable, not only just Christmas, but any time of the year type um, wintry kind of images and phrases. So I was looking for cartridges that had cute phrases that we could put on our um, hoop wreath that maybe was a little bit different than what you're seeing everybody else say just Merry Christmas or something so this is this image set has 140 images and it's got some really awesome ones on here so there's the one that I picked was that which was the peace love and joy because that to me just fit the feel that I wanted to have for the project but of course you could change this and do whatever you know image that you want I'm going to show you how to do all this it step by step but you know feel free to change it up but I wanted to highlight this particular image set because it's so cute lots of fun stuff hot chocolate weather it's got lots of mugs on it it's got all kinds of things um, I'm just here for the eggnog. That would be really cute on a shirt. And uh, hot chocolate is like a hug from the inside. Just really super cute. So lots of things to make signs or shirts with or whatever on this image set. And I just wanted to scroll through real quick and let you guys see this because a lot of people don't know this is out there because it was recently added. Now, these images are part of the Cricut Access Library. And if you're not a Cricut Access subscriber, you might want to consider doing that because Cricut has added, oh my gosh, like 2,000, more than 2,000 images recently on all kinds of really cool designs. Um, if not, you are able to purchase the, in, the files individually. Okay, so now that we know what the image set looks like, let's go back up here and I'm going to insert peace, love, and joy. All right, now here's the image when it came in. And I know that I have started with a nine inch hoop that I'm going to be using. Those are the embroidery hoops. I'm going to show you how I did the design space file and then I'm going to go over all the supplies that I used and then you're going to see me make the project step by step so you can be successful making it too. Okay so this is the image that I picked and then I know that I have a nine inch embroidery hoop so I want to go into shapes and I'm going to kind of create my own template and I'm going to size that to nine inches. Okay, now I can move my image over on top of that. So I'm just going to take that image and I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to say send to front so it comes to the front. And then I can use the grab bars and I can size this to the size that I want. Okay, so that looks good. I may want to play around and see if I want to change the color so I can get a chance to see what it looks like, that type of thing. Now what I did was that I actually wanted more of a visual 
similar to what the fabric it is that I'm going to be using. So how did I do that? Here is what I came up with. I took that same circle, but I did the print and cut uh, feature so that I was able to get a visual image of what it would look like if I did it on plaid. Okay, so I know I'm going to use a red and black plaid. I didn't have exactly the same red and black plaid, but I had something kind of similar. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to move this out of our way. Okay, so here is my circle. And I'm going to come over here to my layers panel where the circle is located. And I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click. I guess it's left click anyway and then I'm going to come up here where it says print under layer attributes I'm going to go print and then I'm going to come over here to patterns so I'm going to click pattern and then what I want to do is I want to do some filtering and down here at the bottom there's filter I'm going to click on filter and I want to pick patterns that are red and black. Okay, then I can just kind of scroll through. Now some of the patterns are, um, some of these are ones that I uploaded from other design uh, digital image sets. And then, but you can find something that's in design space. You don't have to purchase it. Uh, if you're just using it for this purpose of design template, if you were going to actually do a print and cut file and you were going to flatten the image and want to print out the pattern, you would need to own that image, either be an access member or it's one you've uploaded or you would get the option to purchase it. Okay, just wanted to be clear on that. Okay, so I'm just going to take that plaid pattern here. And voila, it is now on my circle. Isn't that awesome? So anytime you wanna play around with something like that, use that print and cut feature and put the pattern on your image so you can see what you like or not, okay? So here's what came into Design Space. It looks like this, right? But I know that based on this pattern, that black isn't gonna work for me. So I wanna come over here to where, um, the peace love and joy is located and i'm going to click on peace love and joy and i think i want to see if how would i like this if it was white <gasps> that looks so much better doesn't it i really like it in white and then i'm not crazy i like the gold i like the i like the gold on there that looks pretty nice but i think what i want to do is i want to see how would it look if i did silver stars so I'm going to come find the stars and I want to change the stars to silver and I want to change the hearts which are currently blue on the file and I want to see if I change those to gold how would that look on my project. Wow that looks pretty good but you know what I kind of like the fact that uh, it's got the little sprinkling of the, what I would call, you know, confetti, but I want a little bit more on here. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to come over here to basic shapes and I'm going to add a star because there's one here. Isn't that nice? And I'm going to just come over here and I want to add, let's say I want to add a star up here and I can size this however big I want it to be. And then I can come over here to the layers panel and I can pick that same silver color and make that star that color. And let's say I want to make a duplicate. I can come up here to my layers panel and make another one and maybe put it over here. Oh, I think I want to put it up here. And I may make that one a little bit smaller. Okay. And let's see. I think I need some more hearts, don't you? So I'm going to go into basic shapes and I'm going to go grab a heart image and there again I'm just giving you guys an idea how you can take that same image phrase or whatever but you can add more to it and a lot of people think oh I don't like it exactly that way well guys you know you can change things 
Um, that is the beauty of Design Space. Okay, so I'm going to take that same heart. I want to duplicate it, and I'm going to put one over here, but I want this one to be smaller, and I'm going to turn it this way. Okay, so I've just added a couple of things. I think I want to add another star. Okay, I know mind blown, right? There's all kinds of things you can do. Okay, so now I kind of sprinkled a little bit more fun into my image shape. I'm going to make this one a little smaller. I'm just eyeballing this so it looks good to me. Okay, so now that I have these on here, what's going to happen is if I went to print this out, if I went to cut it, I'm sorry, if I went to cut this, what's going to happen is if I hit make it, It's going to come up and tell me my image is too large. Why is it going to tell me that? It's going to tell me that because your printable image can only be nine and a quarter by six and three quarters, I think. Uh, that's the limitations that you have when you do print and cut. Now, we're not actually going to be printing this. We were just doing this circle as a representation for our uh, hoop wreath that we're doing. So what you can do is you can come down here to... Uh, the layers panel and I can go see where the circle is and I can just click that little eye there and it removes it from the image set okay so um, it's there if I want to look at it again but I if I go to cut it's not going to tell me that I have a problem because it won't cut it okay so now that we've got this set there's a couple of other things I want to show you you'd have to do because we added something to this image set, I need to come in here and ungroup this. Okay, and I want to I want to move. Oops, sorry. I want to move the piece out of the way because that's already uh, grouped attached. Okay, but what I need to do is I want to be able to once I put my iron on together. Okay, see how that kind of lines up and it would be nice if these stayed in the same position for me because I spent some time just making sure it was going to be correct, right? So I'm going to move my piece out of the way and then I'm going to come over here to the layers panel and I'm going to go find my stars. And I want to turn my stars off. Okay, so I'm going to turn my stars off by clicking the little eye, and you're going to start seeing them disappear. Okay, and there's one more big star I need to get rid of. Okay, so once I have the stars hidden, that's what's happening when I, they're still there, I didn't delete them, they're still there. I am now going to just take my cursor and highlight all of the gold hearts and then I want to come up here and I'm going to group them and then I want to go to the layers panel and I want to attach them okay now when I go to cut this out these are going to cut out in that same orientation so as I'm layering this ironed on project I don't have to individually place each of these hearts they're all going to cut out on one okay so once we do that then what i want to do is i'm going to come turn my um, stars back on and all i'm doing is i'm going back to those same ones that i hid and i'm unhiding them I want to make sure that those are all, oh, there's another one there. Okay, so now I can grab my gold stars and move them out of the way because I've grouped and attached them so they come out as one. And now I just want to highlight all of my silver stars and I'm going to do the same thing. I want to group them and I want to attach. Okay, so now we've got that. We can move our peace and love back over here, and then we can add our 
gold hearts back over here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this, I'm going to highlight all of it, and I'm going to group everything back together. Okay, so that's the file that you're going to get. It looks like this. Okay, so that's how I did it. I took that one image in Design Space that we just got, and then I added a few other things to it. But because when I go to cut this, I want it to remain in that same orientation so that it makes it easier when we go to iron everything on okay all right so i just wanted to cover that with you guys real quick now we're going to move on to talking about the supplies that i use for this project and also we're going to assemble it together so that you see all the steps that are going to need be needed okay let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need if you want to recreate this project and so that you'll know what you'll see me working with the first thing you, of course you're going to need as we're making this embroidery hoop wreath is the embroidery hoop um, you can buy these at any of the craft stores will have them or fabric stores and even some of the big box stores carry these i do recommend you get the wooden one i'm using a nine inch hoop uh, because that's the size of the project i wanted to make and um, the image is scaled to fit a nine inch hoop. If you wanna make, if you wanna use the bigger hoops, there's several different sizes, feel free to do that. Uh, you may need to make your image just a little bit bigger in design space before you cut it if you're gonna use a bigger hoop, okay? Now, you also will need the fabric, whatever fabric that you wanna iron on to. And I'm using a buffalo plaid check that I got, fabric that I got at um, Joann's. And then I cut this about into a 12 by 12 inch square. Um, so I have about an inch all the way around my project. We'll be trimming this later. So you, if you're using a bigger embroidery hoop, make sure that you're trimming your fabric so that it is at least an inch all the way around the circumference of the circle, okay? Now, speaking of that, we were also going to need some tools, right? So I'm use my Cricut fabric uh, tool uh, scissors so that I'm able to cut my, tr my fabric and we'll be trimming the back of this once we get it finalized onto our hoop. And so you'll need some fabric scissors to cut fabric with. And um, if you did not get the Cricut Holiday Mystery Box, and if there's any left, it was a tools mystery box, which was awesome because you got a pair of the fabric scissors in there, as well as some of the weeding tool kits, okay? So uh, you'll need some weeding tools because we're working with iron-on today. So I'm going to be using the Cricut weeding tool and also the fine tip uh, tweezers. And I will be using the Cricut uh, True Control knife and the... Um, Cricut metal uh, safety ruler, okay, because I'll be using that to trim up my iron on. And the other tools you're going to need is we will be um, using some wire. So you can use either floral wire or you can use, uh, I have some jewelry wire I'm using, and um, you also need some wire cutters. Never cut your wire with your scissors, particularly your fabric scissors, because you will um, dull or ruin your scissors okay so you want to have some wire cutters I think I picked these up at Dollar Tree right so a buck I got a whole pack of tools um, and I use these all the time part of my craft stash all right you will also need two floral picks okay so the two floral picks whatever matches your particular project um, you know they're selling these in, in all the craft stores right now and also even some of the big box stores in their holiday have um, floral picks so you'll need to get something that coordinates with whatever the kind of fabric that you want for the project but you'll need two of these and you'll also need some ribbons so you will need a this this ribbon is let's see let me make sure this ribbon is a one and a half inch wide ribbon and it is a wired ribbon okay so it does have wire so it holds its shape i recommend that it's just less frustrating than having a ribbon without wire on it i got this roll at um, dollar tree and so it's economical <laughs> and um and it just happened to go with the look that i wanted for my project but you need some ribbon and you also will need about 10 inches of a half inch ribbon that we're going to use as a hanger for our um, 
embroidery hoop wreath, okay? So you want something that's just going to coordinate with your colors or whatever, um, and so you'll need that. And of course, we're, it's an iron-on project, so we will be using the Cricut Everyday Iron-on. I'm using white, and then I'm using the Cricut foil iron on silver and gold. You can change up whatever colors you want to use. Um, this is what I thought looked best on my material that I'm working with, with this red and black uh, plaid. And of course, since it's iron on project, I will be using the Cricut Easy Press and an Easy Press mat. If you um, don't have that, you can certainly use a towel, uh, like a you know bath towel folded over and an iron. A dry iron. Okay, so that talks about all the tools. Let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and cut out all of my images on my iron-on. Make sure that you select in Design Space that you select that you're cutting uh, this particular iron-on materials, whatever you're, whatever you've chosen to use, and um, and then I'm going to show you from where I trim it up and weed it and all of that and how we're going to apply it. Okay, I did want to talk about the iron-on before we go to cut it so that you remember to do a couple of things. When you're working with iron-on, you always have to remember that this product is different. It has it already has a carrier sheet on the front of it, which is kind of the shiny, see how, much, how shiny that is? It's what we call the shiny plasticky side. And then the back of it looks like more like a flat matte color, okay? This is actually... The, your vinyl and then the shiny side is the carrier okay so it's already on here you don't need any extra transfer tape or anything it's already on iron on all right now what you're going to do is I like to use the Cricut blue um, light grip mat when I'm working with this but I need one that's sticky okay um, because you want this to stay put and so don't use one that's you know not as sticky you want one that's like a closer to a new one and what you want to do is you want to put that shiny side down onto your mat. Okay, and then you just want to rub it down really good. Make sure that it's down. And I just like to kind of rub my hand around it and just make sure it's stuck really well. And then when you go into design space and you send this to uh, cut, you then make sure that you mirror your image so that it's going to cut out in reverse on this side because when you flip this over to be able and you do the same thing whether you're using it's it doesn't matter which kind of iron on you're using if you always do this so all the iron on even the foil iron on already has a little plastic clear cover sheet on it and um, you'll always flip these over and cut from the back side and you'll mirror your image. Now that you have cut your iron on, you want to uh, go ahead and get it weeded. So this is the shiny side. I'm going to flip it over and when you run your hands across it, you're going to be able to tell where uh, the cut is and you can see the image. And what I want to do is I'm going to trim this up a little bit so that when I go to weed it, it's going to allow me to have um, extra here that I can use on a different project. I'm not wasting that, okay? Uh, because I only had one uh, big 12 by 12 sheet uh, that was available for this size of project in my stash, so I needed to use a whole sheet. So I'm just going to run it, my true control knife down the side. I am working on a, this Cricut self healing mat, so you don't want to do this on the top of your. Uh, desk, desktop, right? And then I need to see where the edge is here. I'm just going to line this up and figure out where the edge of my design is. I think it'll be perfect right here. This makes it so easy. And then when you're working with the True Control knife, the Cricut Safety Ruler has this ridge here, so your fingers stay on this side of it where my hand is. And then you run your knife down along the side like this and you get nice clean cuts and you don't have to worry about you're gonna cut your finger off <laughs> okay so now I have all this excess I can use on another project 
I've done that same thing with the silver and the gold foil that I'm going to be using and now we're going to weed it okay some of you have not worked with um, the iron on before so I want to make sure you see the whole process so here is the gold iron on that I'm using and you can kind of see there you go you can see the hearts on here the hearts I attached in the file so that they will stay in place so when we go to iron this on it's going to be um, so much easier than having to do each individual heart so what you want to do is I'm going to flip it over and I have that shiny side goes down this is the back of the the iron on and I'm just going to grab it in the corner and lift it up now this is foil iron on but all the iron on any type that you use you're going to be doing the same thing so you'll start seeing can you guys see now that that is a plastic liner and you're in the remaining part that stays on it is the part that's going to be ironed onto your project okay so I'm going to peel all of this off and you just want to go slow and just have a little bit of firm pressure as you're peeling it off I kind of like to do mine at an angle okay and then you have your gold hearts that's what I'm using here you can see it better like that so this piece is ready I'm gonna flip it over because I don't want the sticky side to stick to something else and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the silver one okay I just want to grab a corner and you could put this back on your um, light grip mat if you want to weed it some people like to do that I do that sometimes today I'm gonna just do this so I just grab it once I get it started you can just peel this right off and you just want to keep working it and you'll start seeing those stars appear and of course I've done exactly the same thing where my stars are attached and staying in the same position that I need them to be when I go to do the iron on onto my project okay so now the silver ones are done and again this could be any colors you want to be using alright so I'm going to set that off to the side and then I have the white so um, same thing you're just going to take your tool grab the edges and then we're just going to peel this off of that back lining sheet. Now, you want to make sure that you there's going to be some curves on here with the letters and stuff. And you just want to be gentle about peeling around those curves when you go to weed it. And make sure that you don't miss anything. Okay, so let's just get this. I'm going to kind of get the outside done first and then we're going to go in and do the center of the letters okay now this is a nice big font um, but you don't you know you can do your own words this is a phrase in design space like I showed you guys earlier and uh, but you could do your own words but you want to pick something that is going to be not too difficult to weed and it has enough uh, weight to the letters that you're using so that it shows up particularly for using plaid now on your you know that there are cuts where the where the inserts are in like the P and the E and that type of thing so you need to be able to peel these up so you do just like you would with regular vinyl okay so once you finish weeding out your letters you want to flip this over and you want to make sure that you didn't miss any of the centers of any of your lettering or whatever and once you've done that then it's time for us to get uh, ready to do the iron on part of this I'll be right back okay so now we're getting to the actual iron on part of this project and you'll see here that I have the new Cricut Easy Press 2 in the 6x7 size I love this size it's great for smaller projects like this of course it comes in a 9x9 and also a 12x10 if you're doing much bigger projects but for my purposes today I'm using the 6x7 Cricut Easy Press 2 now um, I have my I also am using the Cricut Easy Press. This is the 12 by 12 mat. These Easy Press mats work great with the Easy Press, of course, 
because it has special coatings and materials on the inside of it that will allow the, I'm doing this on top of my craft mat, okay, not on top of my desk, and the material on here will stay cool to the touch while the top of this is going to reflect the heat up into my project so you get better adhesion on your projects than if you were just using like a towel or something okay so um, these are definitely worth it during the 12 days of Christmas sale at Cricut these are on sale at uh, different uh, product days and um, so keep an eye out for that and I'll try to also let you guys know when I see that they're on sale again okay and of course you need your fabric okay so I got this piece of um, flannel, like I said, and it's a buffalo flat panel. I got it at um, Joann's, and um, it has kind of a fuzzy side to it, okay? And then the back side of it is the smoother side of it. What I'm working with is, um, this is a cotton poly blend flannel. Um, sometimes your flannel is going to be made out of wool, and then other times you're going to have either a total cotton flannel or you'll have one that's a cotton blend. So you need to know which type of fabric it is that you're using because you'll need to know how to adhere it. Now I'm using the Easy Press. You can also use an iron and a dry iron and a folded towel if you want or whatever. You can even use the Easy Press mount with the iron. Um, and what you will need to do is at Cricut.com. Um, they have a Cricut Easy Press settings, and I will provide a link in the description where you see this video so you guys can go out there and take a look at it. But they have a chart. You can actually print this out, and it lets you know if you guys haven't seen this yet. Look at this. It's foolproof, I'm telling you. So it tells you what type of iron on that you're using, and then it gives you all these different base materials, and you just figure it out. So here is the everyday iron on and I'm using the cotton uh, poly blend fabric and it tells me I need to set it at 315 and it I will need to iron it on for 30 seconds and then that little red circle thing means that it is a warm peel product that I'm going to be using and I'll talk about that in a minute and then it also lets me know that I just need to apply light pressure. That little feather means gentle pressure. You don't have to really push down really hard on it. And um, so this this chart comes in handy for you have to have this, okay? Um, there's also on that um, help site for Cricut, there's also an interactive guide so you can tell it what it is, what material you want to be using, and then what iron-on product you want to be using, and it'll let you know if the iron-on type that you're picking, you can actually use it on the fabric that you're picking. <sighs> Isn't that brilliant? Anyway, so I need to set this to, I'm going to turn this on, the Cricut Easy Press 2 will shut off after you've had it on for 10 minutes, okay? So don't freak out. Um, so you want to set, here is the temperature gauge. I'm going to press on that and then it'll let me know what the current temperature is set at. It always keeps the latest setting that you set it at, which I love about the Easy Press 2. The original Easy Press did not do that, so that's, in a, that's a, a new feature. And then you can either do, you can either, in, let me do that again. So you can either decrease or increase based on what you need for temperature wise and then the same thing the little clock down here is for the amount of seconds that you need to be ironing on that particular project so you would also can either increase or decrease it okay so what this is your um, your iron on uh, turning the easy press on so that's the on button and then once it comes to the temperature that you've set it at from your chart for the material and the iron on type you're using the little green, the little cricket head will turn green, letting you know that your project is ready for you to use. Okay, for the easy press to be used. All right, so here we have the fluffy side of this. I personally like this side better. Okay, that's just my preference. I know you probably can't see that much of a difference in it, but for some reason, this side just I just like this side that's not as fuzzy. Um, 
but that's going to be up to you guys. You, but I just wanted to tell you why you're going to see me do this. Now you want to go ahead and just kind of gently heat up the back of your fabric. You definitely want to make sure that it is flat and has been uh, pressed, okay? Um, but I'm just warming it up a little bit because that helps you get better adhesion when you're working with iron-on. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to lay my hoop onto my fabric and get it lined up. You want to have the um, top where you're going to be tightening this. You want to have that set at the top. And then you want to take your peace, love, and joy part of this or whatever words you're using. And you want to kind of get it so it is centered onto in, where you want it on your hoop. Okay. So, and then you just move your hoop out of the way. Okay. So, it, like I said earlier, this already has the carrier sheet. I don't have to do anything else to it. I'm going to pick up my easy press. I'm going to put this. It just happens to fit on this one particularly well. And then I'm going to hit my green Cricut head here. And it's going to do all the work for me. I've got it at the 315 temperature. It's counting down for me. All I'm doing is just with one hand putting gentle pressure onto the project, I've made sure that the heating element on the bottom of the Cricut Easy Press 2 has covered all of my designs, so I should get a good even adhesion. Okay, and then when it's finished, it beeps. If you guys heard the beep, I'm going to lift this off. Okay, now this said, let's talk about the warm pill and the cold pill. So when we look at the chart here, you're going to see some have the little red, I guess it's supposed to be like the sun, and then there's a little snowflake. Your different types of iron-on are either a warm pill or a cold pill. A warm pill means you need to wait until this carrier sheet is cool enough to the touch that you can put it, put your finger on it without it burning your hand. Right now it's still too cold, too, too hot. So I'm going to let this cool for another second before I remove the carrier sheet. Okay. If I was working with, um, right now we're working with the Everyday Iron-On and it's a warm pill. In a few minutes we're going to be working with the, um, with the, with the foil iron on and it is a cold pill which will mean that we'll need to wait for it to be completely cool before we're able to remove the carrier sheet okay so it's one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and pick those two materials for this project so we could talk about the difference in those now you will see on the chart that there are a few on here that have this little uh, um, like a weight those mean that you need to do firm pressure okay the gentle pressure with the feather is just like you saw me where I just kind of barely rested my hand on it and you could even just use one hand and it worked great okay but if you see where it has the little um, pound like a weight on here what you're going to need to do is that's firm pressure so you're going to want to put both hands on it and you're going to kind of lean into it so that it will apply a little bit more pressure and that's going to depend upon the iron on you're using and what kind of base material you're applying it to now i'm i'm this is now cool enough that i can touch it okay it's still warm it still feels warm it's not cold when i touch it okay so all i'm going to do is just roll this back and now you're going to see the magic where it's adhered. Yay! Okay, so we've got this on. Looks great. It is good to go. All right, now we want to apply our beautiful foil iron on. Okay, so you have two pieces. You have uh, some hearts and you have some stars. Now I've already put these in the orientation that they need to be in. And so you will just lay this onto your project like so okay over the iron-on that's fine and now we're going to turn our easy press back on and we're going to come back over here and we're going to see that the foil iron-on on the cotton poly blend says it needs to be at 295 and you also do it for 30 seconds but it's a cold peel so we're going to turn the easy press back on and I'm going to hit the temperature gauge and then I'm going to go to 
the minus sign and I'm going to get it down to where it says 295 and it is at temperature because the machine had it had already cooled down because I turned it off in between this and so we are good to go the little green cricket head has popped up for me and so what I want to do is just take my easy press and set it on there again this is gentle pressure so I don't have to do too much I'm just gonna hold it with one hand here I turned it the other direction so that it could just you know basically cover those gold hearts and it's counting down for me when it's finished counts there's the beep so I know that this is good okay and this is a cold pill remember because it has the little snowflake so this is going to need to be completely cool before I go to tear to pull it off to pull the carrier sheet off that's where I think that a lot of people have some trouble when they're working with different iron-on is because they don't know when to take the carrier sheet off of it so this needs to be completely cool what I'll do is lift this up okay and flip this around a little bit get a little bit of air underneath it if you if you're working with the easy press mat you'll notice that there's heat if you take your project off of it that there's heat you can feel it on the easy press mat but the flips the back side of this is completely cool and it has not damaged or done anything to the surface to my uh, self healing mat that I'm using okay so I'll just flip it around and let that kind of cool off you want it to be completely cool to touch not warm you want it to be cold okay and this is pretty much cooled off because I took it off the mat so I gave it a chance to cool off and now I'm going to just do the same thing where I'm going to reveal just pull that right off okay so there we go that looks awesome and now we're going to do the second layer which is the stars okay so there again I've already positioned these so once you kind of line them up on your project like so okay that looks cute I'm gonna go ahead and turn this again like this and it is the same material so I'm using the same temperature and the same setting just going to hold that with my hand. I'm not even putting barely any pressure on it. It's doing the countdown thing. Okay, so it has finished. I want to make sure that it got all of my stars here and it's all hot. So when I touch it, I can know that it got the edges. This was the one I was worried about if I had it on there, but it seems to be fine. Okay, now I can turn my easy press off. Now, if you're using a iron, a, it needs to be a dry iron, and your temperatures may be different because, of course, you're using an iron. Cricut has on that site, they have a section that's for if you're not using an easy press and if you're using a household iron, okay? Um, and so you'll want to follow those directions if you're using a regular iron. But I used to use an iron, and I got okay results. But now that I use and I and I've had a big heat press, I actually got rid of my big heat press because I love using the Cricut Easy Press. It is so much easier because of the type of material that we're working on and the type of iron on that we're using. You don't have to have an extra carrier sheet um, to fit in to go in between these pieces, okay? Because of the size of the image that we're using. If you're layering a bunch of different other types of iron-on vinyl, you might need to put a carrier sheet over the whole thing if you're adding a new element. Um, but for this one, we're good. And it is cool enough now. I should be, there we go. Those stars look beautiful. Look how cute that looks. Oh my gosh, it is adorable. Okay, so this is, we've got the, the iron-on part done, and now we're going to assemble our wreath. Okay, so now that we have our iron-on onto our material, now's the fun part. Now you start seeing the project come together. So I want you to take your hoop, and you're going to unscrew this, okay? You're going to loosen it up so that 
your top hoop comes off of your bottom hoop. Okay, don't do it all the way, just enough that, that it will open up. Okay, and then we have our piece. I'm going to slide that under there. And what you're going to do is the bottom piece goes on the bottom, of course, and then you have this top piece. Okay, so you want to line it up. Make sure the top of your hoop, where the, where the screw part is, goes at the top and then you just want to push this down until your fabric is on there just like that okay so once you get it on and you make sure it's the way you want it that it looks good I like the way that looks um, you know if you need to move, adjust it all you have to do is lift it up and move it around a little bit more until you get it exactly where you want it okay and then you can put this back down on there just like this. Just make sure that you have that top part exactly where you want it. Okay, so once you get it on here, now for this particular image, I wanted to make sure that I left it kind of open at the top here because we're going to be adding a bow and our greenery and stuff at the top. So I kind of intentionally placed this a little lower on my hoop. So once you get it like that and you get it the way you want, you want to start tightening up your screw. So I'm just turning it until it is tight and is not really letting me do it anymore. And then you can flip this over and you can actually pull on your fabric just a little bit to make sure that it is stretched in there just perfectly because you don't want it to be slipping on you. If it's if you're if it's really pulling up a lot, it means that you haven't uh, you haven't tightened your loop hoop well enough. I'm going to make sure I've got this tight on here now, and you just keep turning this until you get that. You want to make sure that you've got a nice taut piece here. And we're going to flip this over, and all you need to do is just cut around the edge. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things. One, you can just take your scissors, I'm using my fabric scissors, and I'm going to just make a little bit of a circle all the way around mine. Okay, don't cut yours yet. Wait till you see what this looks like. Okay, so if you want it to be a permanent piece, you want to trim your fabric. See how, I, how I've trimmed it like that? And then you're going to run some glue along the edges here and then fold this over. Okay, and let this stay on. Okay, I don't want mine to do that. I want mine to be, um, I want mine to be completely flush. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just trim close to the edge of the hoop as I can. And just go all the way around it. Now, you can leave this open on the back, or the alternative is you can cut a circle uh, out of like Cricut craft board if you want, and then glue that to the back of your wooden frame if you feel like you want it to be have a more finished look on the back. I'm leaving mine like this. It looks cute that way. That's what I'm going with. Okay. So now we get to decorate it <laughs> and get it finished. Isn't it pretty? It's looking so cute already. You could just use this. You could just use it just like this and not add anything to it if you don't want to. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to work with our florals. So uh, depending upon what you picked, because everybody's going to have something different, I would think, you want to kind of fluff out your florals and get them in the orientation that you want them in. I'm just kind of pulling some of these, okay? And you're going to want to lay them together. Now, depending upon how long your stems are, you may need to trim your stems down a little bit. So I've got these two, and then what I'm going to do is I want, I'm going to leave room here in the center of this 
so that I will be able to put my ribbon there. Okay, my ribbon's going to go here in the center. But what I want to do now is I want to wire these together so it becomes one piece. Okay, so I'm going to take my floral wire. I'm just going to cut a piece of this off. I cut about 12 inches off. Okay, so cut 12 inches of floral wire off to fold your floral wire in half like that. Make kind of a little half loop. Here's the open ends down here. Um, and you're going to want to fold these together. And you're going to just start wrapping. You want to make sure this part needs to stay sturdy. So then I usually just push mine down on my mat and kind of wrap that, but I want to make sure that they, this is really secure, that they are becoming one piece. So now I've got these two pieces are wired together. Okay, so you want to get to that point. Then we're going to make our bow, and you need to get your um, piece of, your 10 inch piece of ribbon that's going on next. This becomes the hanger. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this. I slipped it into the top here. I'm just going to tie this just like this and I'm just going to make a double knot just tie it tight make a double knot and then I'm just going to trim that off okay. this is going to be our hook and you're not going to see that piece you want to trim that up. Sorry about that. I didn't quite cut mine. This is going to be our piece that you're going to hang it on the uh, wreath hook or if you're going to hang it on the wall. If you are not display, if you're not going to display it on a hook and you're just going to display it in a stand, you don't have to add the hook, this uh, loop to it. Okay, so now I've got something that I could slip over the hook of the uh, wreath hanger. All right. So now you see it coming together, it's starting to look really cute, and then we're going to add a bow on the top here. Okay, so now it's time to make our bows to go on our piece. So we've got this part already tied together. We already did that. That's going to go at the top, and now we're going to make our bow. Now depending upon what ribbon that you're using, you may do this differently. So I, the ribbon I picked is what they call it's only single sided that means the pretty side is only one one side I don't know if y'all can see that but it's glittery and it's silver and red glitter it's really pretty but the back side of it you just see the print you don't see the pretty silvery side this is a single sided ribbon okay you need about twin no oh, I'm sorry you need about 44 inches of ribbon to make the size bow that I'm going to show you but it, depending upon how big a hoop that you're making or the size of the ribbon, I'm using one and a half inch ribbon. That's what I recommend for this type of project. Um, it's easier to work with. You can always add more loops if you want a fuller bow. Um, the bigger ribbon, by the time you have your, um, your picks on the side, if you use really big ribbon, it's just going to seem out of proportion. So the one and a half inch is a really good size. So that's what I recommend. I'm going to be using the single sided, but they also have what they call double sided, which means that the ribbon looks exactly the same, whether it's the front or the back. Okay. It doesn't really have a front or the back. Okay. All right. So if you're using this ribbon, you can make the bow like I'm going to show you, but you don't have to do all the twists that I'm going to show you. You can just make the loops because you don't have to worry about that you don't want to see the, the underside of the ribbon. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so uh, one and a half inch ribbon, you need about 44 inches of ribbon, I believe is what I measured. Now remember, this has a wire. I suggested that you have wired ribbon. You do not want to use your fabric scissors to cut a wire ribbon. You want to use a different scissor. I like to use the Tim Holtz uh, tonic scissors because these are made so that you can cut wire with them. Um, and uh, you just don't want to use your fabric scissors to cut this because it does have a wire that runs down the sides of it. And that helps give it the shape. All right, 
You also will need a piece of the um, floral wire and this I cut about six inches and I'm going to go ahead and bend it so it's like a little uh, V here okay because this part is easier if you go ahead and kind of have this shaped up to be able to put on your ribbon so there again I just used some wire and my wire cutters to do that and I forgot to tell you guys something earlier and that was that I am going to be using a glue gun to adhere all of this to the top of my hoop and I apologize for not mentioning that in the in, earlier in the video when I was talking about the supplies it wasn't until I got to this point that I realized I didn't tell them so you do want to have your glue gun out and you want to have it warming up and getting ready alright so I'm going to move this up here so we have our hoop with the fabric our iron-ons on it we have a ribbon tied to the top sorry okay so we have our hoop we have the iron on on it on our fabric we've got that stretched we've got a ribbon up here if you plan on hanging this you definitely need to have something to hang it from so you I just we tied the ribbon on there and of course you have your floral picks that have been uh, tied together okay so you'll have that part and now we're gonna make the bow that goes on the top so we're gonna take our ribbon and you're gonna take one end and you're going to make a loop okay it just needs to be a small loop doesn't have to be a big loop I tend to roll up that inside just so it's past that and that's going to be my starting point now I'm going to because I'm using a one single sided ribbon I'm going to have to scrunch this in with my fingers Okay, I just scrunched it in and now I'm going to twist okay so I made one twist so that now my ribbon is the same I see the same side of the ribbon okay then I'm gonna make a loop so when to do my loop I'm gonna look at the top of my project and I'm gonna figure out about how big am I gonna want my loop I don't want this to be too big so I'm probably gonna make this it's about a three inch loop okay so I'm gonna stick that gather that so I've got a loop I have my center loop and then I have one side loop then I'm gonna twist this again in my hand so that it now then I'm gonna measure so now see how it's I see the the pretty side on all three of these in the center and on the left loop and on the right loop okay if you were doing this with this with the double sided ribbon you don't have to do the twist to get the pretty side showing you'll just make the loops okay um, so I'm gonna go ahead and twist again so that I get that same pretty side of the ribbon facing up and I'm gonna make another loop I'm gonna make these all uh, almost exactly the same size of loop then I'm gonna twist it again now it just so happened that the ribbon that I picked for this was single sided um, it's much easier if you're learning to make bows to get the the bows uh, ribbon that is already uh, double sided for you okay so I'm making six loops total three on one side and three on the other so I'm just going to keep doing that let me move this out of the way okay so I'm gonna flip this around I have to you always have to twist at the back so that you make sure that all your loops have the pretty side showing when you're using the single sided ribbon okay so once I have all I have three loops on this side I have the single in the middle the center and then I have three loops on this side and they're all about the same size loop I want to twist this one more time in the back okay and then I'm not going to have a tail on this ribbon because we already have all this greenery our, our pick our floral pick is kind of acting as if it's the tails of our ribbon so I'm not adding tails okay if you wanted to add tails you could cut two separate pieces and go ahead and put them on the back before you do this next step 
we're going to trim the little tail that I do have. But I'm going to stick this wire into the center of the ribbon and pull it around. And I want to get it in the so that it's holding the loops, the center loop and all of these all of these outer loops together. And then I'm going to tighten this up and really twist that so it's super tight in the center. Okay? So you want to play with this a little bit. I'm not fluffing my bow yet. I'm just getting that this part of the ribbon. Okay, you want to have some it even so that you have some of this left over the the ends of the the wire because we're going to wrap this around our piece. Okay, now I know that I've got this where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and cut off that extra length because I don't want tails for this bow. Okay, once I get that done then what I can do is start fluffing my bow out to make sure it is going to be what I want. Okay, so I'm just going to fluff it out. That's the great beauty of working with the wired ribbon is you can get really nice fluffy bows. So, you know, so that's kind of how it's coming together. Okay, so here is my pick and I want to tie this bow onto here. I'm just going to twist that on and then I want to flatten this out as much as I can across the back and then I'm going to take my wire cutters and trim the back. No sense having extra wire there if we don't need it. Okay, so see how I have my bow kind of positioned. Okay, I don't want the loops hanging down onto my project because I want to not, um, I want to be able to not have it hiding my words, right? So, but you want a nice kind of fluffy bow and you can play with this a little bit more as you get that on there. So once you get it down, okay, once you get it kind of positioned the way you want it, now we're going to hot glue this onto the top of our project. That's why we had to have the hot glue gun. So now that your hot glue gun is ready, I want you to put a very generous amount across the top of the wood part of this. Okay, so I've got a very generous amount on here. Let me add a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to put our pick on. Okay, so you're just going to lay your pick on here. You may want to use a popsicle stick or the end of um, I'm going to use my the end of my tweezers here, and you want to push this down. Push that down onto the glue there, and you're going to hold that until your glue sets up. Okay, and we can go futz with the sides and the bow in a minute, but we want to get this glued down, and you're going to have to kind of hold it down onto that so that until the glue dries some so that it's going to stay on your project. So once you know that you've got that on there really well then you can go back and start adjusting your bow a little more till it looks the way that you want it. So I'm just going to kind of pull my loops around. I'm going to flatten that out a little bit depending upon what your pick looks like you may have some leaves that you're playing with too I've got a couple of leaves here that I'm kind of tucking around okay and there is our finished project thanks a lot stay tuned for day three more fun